My name is uh, Chuck Mackey, and uh, I'd like to tell you a story about the time I met a man who rode his lawnmower 240 miles from Iowa to Wisconsin. <laughs> and if you don't believe the story, uh, I'll give you two, two ways to verify it. For one thing, three of the four people who were in the story as the protagonists are here today, I, I, myself being one of them. And the other thing is, um, is David Lynch made a movie about this very event that I'm going to tell you about. So you can go out tonight when you get home and, and watch the straight story. So this story takes place in uh, 1994. My brothers-in-law and I went on a little trip together that summer and became something that we came to call MOMWO. So MOMWO stands for Men of Messick Women Organization. <laughs> and it signifies that the four of us, me, Dean, Rick, and John, had married the four Messick sisters. <laughs> Jan, Sue, Nancy, and Carol, respectively. <laughs> So anyway, I'm, I'm something of an instigator. I get things started, although as we'll see later, I often don't know what to do after I've done my instigating. <laughs> uh, and the things really start to happen. Um, but the four of us got along famously, so I suggested that we take a road trip. And being a little off center, I didn't suggest a trip to Vegas or New Orleans. I offered instead that we go to a good, old-fashioned county fair and uh, take our bicycles along as well, just for some back roads bike riding. So uh, they all said yes, and uh, before we knew it, it was August 1994, we set off to Lancaster, the county seat of Grant County, Wisconsin. Well, as fate would have it, a few days before our journey, uh, one of my coworkers told me that there was a, a story in the New York Times about some Yahoo who had ridden his lawnmower over 200 miles from Iowa to Wisconsin. There was much teasing and derogatory comments about the simple-minded country folk that we were going to encounter on our trip, but I was intrigued. I wanted to meet this guy. As it turned out, he wasn't that far from where we were staying, just 30 miles up the road or so. So all there was left to do was for me to convince Momwo that we should make the detour to meet this mysterious lawnmower man. As it turned out, Ray Liotta, the actor, would be the deciding factor in making that happen. Well, before we had our rendezvous with the lawnmower man, however, we had a couple of days of bizarrely weird and wonderful goings-ons. Uh, we stayed at a little motel off the town square at 44 bucks per night and spent a good amount of time at Skippy's Brass Rail. Uh, everything was fun and funny. The, the gas station attendant who asked us, you boys in town for the fair? <laughs> the other worldly dinner we had at Mona's in B-Town and the locals who eyed us warily as we played pool like blind men at Skippy's. <laughs> Over the next two days, we took ridiculously long bike rides during the hottest parts of the day, spent some time taking in a tractor pull at the Grant County Fair, and giggled like morons. It was great fun. Our final day, we played golf, poorly, and then headed south to see the Dickeyville Grotto. Dean and I had stopped there on the way into Lancaster, but John and Rick had missed it, and the Dickeyville Grotto is something that shouldn't be missed. It was built by Father Matthias Werneris, the pastor of Dickeyville's Holy Ghost Parish between 1920 and 1930, and features almost gaudy like religious and patriotic paths and displays made out of glass, arrowheads, stick shift knobs for Model Ts, Coke bottles, petrified wood, Indian head nickels, and various other pieces of antiques and memorabilia. Go out of your way to see it if you get the chance. Well, for me, the trip nearly fell apart at this point. John and Rick had driven together from Lancaster and they were leaning towards heading back to Chicago. I tried my best to persuade them, but wasn't getting very far when Dean jumped in. 
he'd seen a picture of our lawnmower man uh, riding in the Platteville Journal, and he was wearing boots like Ray Liotta had worn in something wild. Ray Liotta, that was it. This, that sealed the deal. <laughs> well, let me back up for a minute here. Um, Ray Liotta had become a big part of our mom woe road trip patter, mostly because of the scene in uh, Field of Dreams where he comes walking out of the cornfield to play baseball on uh, Kevin Costner's Build It and They Will Come ball field. On multiple occasions on our rides, we would get off our bikes and one or more of us would go into the eight foot tall corn so that we could have our pictures taken walking out as we all giggled and said, Ray Leona. <laughs> so there we were at the Dickieville Grotto and Dean brought up Ray Leona and that swung the balance so that John and Rick agreed to go visit our lawnmower guy. Only one thing was missing. We should be polite and bring something to our host. A light bulb went off and I ran back to the Dickie Velgrado gift store and uh, bought a St. Christopher's medal, St. Christopher being the patron saint of travelers. And this wasn't just any St. Christopher's medal, mind you, but one that had a little plastic packet on the back of it that contained a few drops of holy water from Lourdes. We were all set. We motored our way up State Highway 61, past Blue River, turned east on County Road S, just beyond Mount Zion, and drove a few miles on a windy country road until we found the trailer we were looking for, the home of Henry Strait. Henry lived there with his son, Henry Jr., and a couple of women of indistinguishable age, and it was Henry's brother, Alvin, who was our lawnmower man. Alvin Strait had ridden his John Deere lawnmower all the way from Lawrence, Iowa, to visit his brother, Henry, who was recuperating from a stroke. It was Henry Jr. who greeted us at the door and he, as he ushered us in, but not before warning us that we had to sit down as soon as we got inside the trailer or else their dog, Pepper, was likely going to bite one or all of us. <laughs> we did as we were told. There was a big old black and white TV blaring a Clint Eastwood spaghetti western in the corner and a noted abuzz, abundance of flies buzzing around. Henry Jr. decided to clean the place up a little bit, so he gathered a dozen or so already eaten corn cobs on a paper plate, opened the front door of the trailer, and threw them into the yard. <laughs> John was later to comment that he didn't know if it was polite or not to swat someone else's flies. <laughs> Well, by this time, Pepper seemed to have settled down a little bit, so I rose to my feet and approached Alvin, who was perched on a torn and battered Naugahyde Lazy Boy. And with a move that was akin to bowing before royalty, I presented him with the St. Christopher's Medal. He said, thanks, and I stood there like a mute. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I had gotten us this far, but that was it. Uh, I had nothing else planned and nothing else came. As I said before, I'm a good instigator, but that's about it. Well, fortunately, uh, Rick filled the gap as he asked Henry Jr. what he did for a living. Henry told him that he worked in a cheese factory, and when Rick asked him what kind of cheese they made, he said, all kinds. Colby, Monterey Jack, Kojak. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I wound up sitting next to Henry Sr. He spoke in what was barely a whisper, and I couldn't understand what he wanted me to do as he held out two fingers on his right hand in a curved shape and told me to pull his finger. <laughs> I thought the old coot was going to let fly with a wicked fart, so I hesitated, but Henry insisted. Pull my finger, he said. So I did. I curved the index and middle fingers of my hand, hooked them over Henry's fingers, and pulled. I couldn't get his fingers to budge. Here he was, an 80-year-old man who was recovering from his second stroke, and the strength in his hands was akin to an iron bar. I didn't know what to say. Again. Well, I'm not quite sure how we did it, but we managed to stay an hour in that moldering mobile home with the streets. <laughs> 
We asked Alvin to come outside and pose with us on his lawnmower, but he refused. His hips hurt him too much. So we said our goodbyes, got Henry Jr. to snap our picture on the John Deere instead, and went on our way. I remember that I was driving my 1990 Isuzu Trooper and a cassette tape of Round Here by Counting Crows was playing as we drove away. Step out the front door like a ghost into the fog where no one notices the contrast of white on white. Round here, we always stand up straight. Round here, something radiates. It was so odd and touching that Dean asked me to turn it off. <laughs> Thank you.